Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So if you are using Power Toys, Power Toys version 0.97 has just rolled out earlier today on the 20th of January. And according to Microsoft, this release packs in a ton of improvements to Command Palette. It also introduces a brand new mouse utility called Cursor Wrap and expands CLR support across several utilities. So just a quick video to give you an overview of the key highlights. There's a lot more going on, but as to not make this video too long. Now, first of all, for Command Palette, there's new UI customization. And Command Palette is basically a desktop launcher that helps you find files, launch apps, and do much more with the Quick Launcher. Very similar to Power Toys Run, but a bit more souped up, so to speak. Now, Microsoft has been focusing a lot on Command Palette, which, by the way, we can launch by heading to Windows Alt and Space. There we go. And Microsoft says there is a brand new personalization page that lets you customize the Command Palette UI, where you can now pick a background, image, and apply color tinting. So if I just click on Settings for Command Palette, here you'll see Personalization. And you've got Background. And if I click on that, you can add an accent color, a custom color, or an image. I'm just going to use a custom color for the purpose of this video. You can choose your color from the palette. There we go. And you can see now if I launch Command Palette, Windows Alt and Space, you can see now we have that custom color I've chosen for the background. And I actually think that's a nice touch. Just bring in a bit of personal user interface customization to quite an important feature in the Power Toys Utility app. And we've also now got support for fallback ranking in Command Palette, where you can control how search results are ordered, which I also think is a nice move. So Microsoft says you can now manage fallback rankings from an extension settings page by clicking on manage fallback order, where yeah, you can reorder commands by dragging them to match your preferences. So once again, heading back to settings, clicking on extensions. As an example, let me click on calculator. And here you'll see manage fallback order. Click on that. And we can now drag those items into your preferred order. You'd like to see them when you are using command palette. And I actually think that's a nice touch, bringing more customization into the utility. And another thing you can do is you can also now control Power Toys directly from Command Palette, which apparently was a big community request according to Microsoft. So if we scroll down on the extensions page, you will see Power Toys. And if we click on that, yeah, all the different fallback commands for controlling Power Toys directly from Command Palette. And you can obviously toggle those on and off to your own personal choice and preference. So if we Windows Alt and Space Command Palette and let's type in Awake. And there we go, we can open Awake settings. So you can control different utilities now directly from the command palette, which I think once again is a nice touch. And then just to mention some more command palette changes, Microsoft says, I'm just going to mention these quickly, that it now supports Pinyin. To enable this, make sure your OS language is set to a supported Chinese variant, Microsoft says. Next up, there's a new built-in remote desktop extension to quickly jump to your remote desktops. You can now select a custom search engine in the web search extension settings. And Microsoft says it's added drag and drop support. File indexer and clipboard history can now drag content from command palette into other apps and extension developers can add this capability to their own 
extensions. So those are a couple of extra changes rolling out for command palettes. So lots going on with that utility. Now, next up, we have a new feature called Cursor Wrap, which Microsoft says if you use multiple monitors and are tired of dragging your mouse all the way across the screen, Cursor Wrap is yet to help. When enabled, your cursor wraps around the edges of the active monitor, moving past the top, bottom, left, or right edge instantly brings it back on the opposite side. So just to show you what this is all about, if we head into input and output, we've got a new mouse utility called cursor wrap. Let's toggle that on. And you can see now if my mouse moves right, it comes out on the left side of the screen. So it's wrapping around the screen, so to speak. And the same happens with top to bottom. And I actually think that's very nice, especially with a multi-monitor setup. I think that's quite a handy feature. So that's new cursor wrap. Go check that out if you do have a multi-monitor setup. And then the quick access fly out, apparently according to Microsoft, yeah, in the system tray, has got a lot faster and it has, it seems a lot snappier than it used to be, which I think is great because Microsoft says it's undocked the quick access fly out from the main settings process, which means it now launches faster. Something else is if we head into settings and we just head to the main page general, we scroll down, yeah, you'll see quick access fly out where Microsoft says you can choose to disable it entirely or assign a keyboard shortcut to open it. So yeah, we can assign a shortcut. You can reset that and so on. So a bit of functionality coming into that quick access fly out. And Microsoft says that over and above that, the power toy system tray icon can now be set to a monochrome style if you prefer a subtler look. So if we head to show system tray icon, we can set a show a monochrome icon that matches the Windows theme. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that correctly in the video. It's gone to monochrome. And then we can uncheck that. And it's back to the normal power toys colorful scheme. So quite a lot going on in this release with customization. And then moving on to the CLR support across Power Toys, Microsoft says in the last release, it added CLR support for Peak, and it's now expanding that even further. Fancy Zones, Image Resizer, and File Locksmith can now all be controlled from the command line with that CLR support, which is, if that's something you're into, is a nice move. Then just to mention some other notable changes for in total, Light Switch can now follow Night Light just switch the mode in settings. Number two, the What's New dialog has been refreshed to make it easier to browse with more detailed release notes going forward. Number three, Advanced Paste now previews hex color values and supports image input for AR transformations. And number four, there's more improvements and fixes across the board. See the full release notes if you want to check that out. So how you would do that is you'd head to General and how you do that is you'd click on release notes and that'll take you over to GitHub, where as mentioned, quite a lot going on. I've just gone over the key highlights for the purpose of this video, but there's a full change log. Go check that out if you are interested, if you'd like some more in-depth information. So guys, that's more or less what's new regarding highlights with Power Toys version 0 0.97, which rolled out slightly earlier today on the 20th of January. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.